God was like, oh, we talking about what we deserve. Ooh. God was like, you don't deserve to get to travel the country and the globe, South Africa, India, Australia, you're getting paid top dollar. You don't deserve to have the health you had. Remember when 2004, some Merc put a Uzi to your head on Sparkman Drive outside the gas station and it was gonna blow your brains away. He never pulled the trigger. Remember all the times you woke up drunk off the side of the road and you couldn't remember the last 16 hours of the night? You don't wanna talk about what you deserve. You should be under the prison, son. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Vault Empowers Talks, so where we don't just scratch the surface. We dive deep into the lives of the world's most captivating, thought-provoking leaders and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Brandi Harvey, and I am excited that you have decided to join me. But before I get into today, today's guest, I need you to go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the button right now so you do not miss any dose of motivation and inspiration. But if you are ready for this conversation today, I already know it's gonna be powerful. The man had already prayed before we got up in the place, y'all. So I know it's gonna be good. Jeremy Anderson is an international speaker with a powerful story and a passion for people. As the founder of the Next Level Speakers Academy, Jeremy has helped thousands of people frame their stories and monetize their message. He is the ultimate family man, whose most important titles are that of husband and father. Jeremy believes that the more resources he has, the more good he can do in the world. Vault Empowers Talks, welcome Mr. Jeremy Anderson to the show. Man, that sounded good, what's up? <laughs> that sounded good, that's me? How you doing, Brandy? That is you. It Man. is a pleasure. Man, it's a pleasure. Me. Oh my goodness! I always tell people we got to interview before the interview. Oh, for sure. Listen, oh, people yeah, don't yeah. know the the interview before oh, the, the interview. It just took place was special. Listen, <laughs> it's so special. Yeah. We 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 just. But we know this one is even gonna just, yeah. I mean, I had to say, you pray before, mm -hmm. you were the first guest to do it. Okay. Now, I always say a prayer before I come out here and I'm always like in my, in my, uh, you know, praise and worship music. I got I my, did. I got my playlist, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Had John P. Key going when I came in. <laughs> I Jesus did. is dead, I know. But I was washing my hands like <laughs> dead. Listen, mm -hmm. we be trying to set, set, set the tone of For it sure. here, just so we know, but, you are just like, you are such a man of faith. And I think that that speaks to really the story, mm -hmm. the adversity, the, I mean, really the the hand of God on your life. Right. Because even before you and I, you know, the, the cameras really started rolling, you talked about, you know, you having your own road to Damascus right. to get here. For you sure. know, some for people sure. was praying for you. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I was in a really... I was in a really dark place. You know, I grew up without my biological father, hmm. a diagnosis of ADHD when I was young, um, drug and alcohol abuse. I went to three different schools for the ninth grade. Wow. So year after year, I kept failing and I kept getting kicked out, uh, stealing cars, getting arrested. Like my life was a mess, right? Uh, and then eventually as I began to <clears throat> matriculate and get older and eventually finish school, I really started getting caught up in the dope game. Mm. And, Next thing I knew, I was selling weed by the pound and trafficking and running two nightclubs. One was for the growing the sexy champagne service. The <laughs> other one was for the hood, about four miles apart. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was just getting money, and I but I wasn't living a life of purpose. Were you living in Atlanta at the time? I was in time? Huntsville, Alabama, and I would come back and forth to Atlanta. I would do parties and events here. In okay. Atlanta. A lot of my connects were here in Atlanta. So oh, wow. Atlanta and Huntsville. Oh, wow. Alabama, yeah. Okay. And I um, was really, really, really successful in the drug business, the nightclub, like that whole scene. And um, I got praying parents and praying grandparents. Yeah. <clears throat> and my mom married a minister when I was young. And I remember asking him, like, so you're going to be my dad? And he was like, yeah, that's my guy. Okay. That's my hero. You know oh, what I'm saying? Wow. So I remember I was talking to Pops, and he told me a prayer he prayed over me. And he prayed. He saw, he saw one of my flyers. This is in his prime, Soldier Boy. We were throwing a party here in Atlanta with Soldier Boy. This was in his prime. Yeah. And it was crazy. And he he saw like, man, my son is like really doing it big in this entertainment space. Mm. And so him being a minister, he knew that was corroding my spirit. Mm. And so he prayed a prayer. He was like, God, whatever my son's doing that doesn't bring you glory, I pray that he fails at it. Wow. Yes. And with like Ooh. I lost both nightclubs and my dope connect. It was so crazy. <laughs> tragic and miraculous wow yeah. you just lost everything and i remember i was like okay god 
Like you got my attention. Wow. Yeah, this is no judge free zone, right? No, right? this is judgment free. So at that point, I was so desperate because I was used to being a man. I, I squandered money. I used to rent like different luxury cars every week. As opposed to just buying something, I would just rent something new because I wanted something new every week. You know what wow. I'm saying? And so I was just squandering so much money. I remember when I lost everything, my only thought was, how do I get it back? So I began to make a list of people to rob. Wow. And local dope boys who had money that I didn't fool with. What year is this? Uh, 2009. 2009. Because I got baptized October 17, 2009. Wow. So this was maybe August, September. It wow. was hot outside. We right. outside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so for my thing was like the quickest way to come up was to take from those who got it. Like yeah. that's just that's just where I was wow. at that time of my life. And um, I ended up taking a road trip with my grandparents. And then on the way back, I was on the phone with my grandmother, who was a praying woman. She had been in Africa ministering. My grandma out in Dallas, Dr. Katie Arnett. Grandma was like, what happened to my grandson? You know what I'm saying? That God was using. God still has a plan for you. And I was like, man, grandma, I done made too many mistakes. She was like, baby, ain't nobody tripping on that. Like, God loves you. He still wants to use you. I said, I believe he loves me. Hmm. But he ain't going to use somebody like me. Hmm. I, I done made, she said, boy, don't be so conceited in your sin. Wow. She was like, you think your little sin is that deep where his blood can't cover it? Wow. And she begins to pour into me. And she was like, you are going to be a mighty man of God. God is going to work miracles in your life. He's going to use you to set the captives free. I'm driving from Atlanta, Georgia, back to Alabama. I done rolled a whole blunt. I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to light this thing up. And grandmama on the grandma line. Grandma going in. <laughs> and I just felt the presence of God. And you know, for like 30, 40 minutes, I was driving, I don't remember switching lanes, speeding up, slowing down, getting off the exit. It's like I was in a trance. Wow. It's like angels was floating my truck down the road. Wow. And I was on the phone with my grandma and I threw my weed out. I broke down and right there I gave my life to Christ. On the side of the road? On the side of the road and, and got baptized a week later. Wow. October 17, 2009. And when I came out that water, I was transformed. At that time of my life, I was smoking a pack of Newports a day two to three blunts a day, not not on the weekends when we would party, just a regular day, wake up to a fifth of Henny, you know what I'm saying? Women, pornography, like money, like that was the life I was living. Yeah. I stopped everything cold turkey. What What do you think you were trying to escape during that time? Uh, pain, rejection, loss of identity. Mm. I didn't really know who I was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I, I, I knew early on that my life was special you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't following the plan. And I was just, you know, I think, I really think a lot of it stemmed from the absence of my biological father. Yeah. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? And so I had to go and find my identity in Christ, yeah. my heavenly father, since I didn't have that, you know what I'm saying, my biological father. So I just struggled. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I was just looking to be accepted and just wanted, you know what I'm saying, get money and, and have a good time. And, and that's kind of the space I was in. Yeah. And then I realized, like, you know, God has more for me. Yeah. So quit all of that, made the transition. So when people see the motivational speaker, the preacher, the author, the entrepreneur, the husband I am today, I'm like, yo, I ain't always been on this path. Yeah. Though. So yeah. that's why I tell people so passionately on stage yeah. you know, to be ye transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. I be telling yeah. folks like, I know what you, you on right now, but your condition yeah. will not be your conclusion. Yeah. And they're like, you don't get it. I'm like, nah, bro, you don't get it. <laughs> and then I share my story and it was yeah. like, yo, you did that. I'm like, yeah, but I done did yeah. kick doors, I done kidnapped like on some gangster stuff. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't take it from nice, regular people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I ever took from somebody, you was another dope dealer. You was you know Robin Hood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, God transformed my life. In October 17th, I got rebaptized, and I ain't been the same since. I love the story of transformation because what it shows anybody who's listening, right, mm -hmm. and who's watching, is that there are people who are interceding on mm -hmm. your behalf, right? There are people who are stepping in when you don't have enough to step right. in for yourself. Right. And so when you are out here speaking, you have the Next Level Speakers Academy where mm -hmm. you teach people how to share their stories. Yep. How often are you running into your story? All the time. Yeah. I talk to somebody. I might do an online training or a workshop or a conference, and I meet people, and they're like, man, I got a story. I just did a workshop last night online. There's a guy that's a pastor that used to be a drug track for her. He's a Hispanic cat out in California. He's a pastor now, but he used to be a drug trafficker. I'm like, yo, I can relate to that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm liking your life is now transformed. He wants to take his message outside of the four walls of the church and reach more people. But yeah, I come across stories all the time. Yeah. And I tell people like, man, you can actually monetize off of your message. Like people will pay you for your resiliency. Yeah. Like when I go to speak for companies and organizations and schools, they're like, we want you to share your story. We want you to share with us the mindset shift that you went through to become the man you are today. Because it's like, yo, if you can go through all of that and overcome yeah. and still reach the level of success that my employees or my students or my team members can know that they can navigate this space and still come out and be successful. Yeah. So a lot of the work I do, I feel like it's like belief system, helping people see the purpose that God has put inside of them and letting them know what's possible. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes we see other people winning and being real successful, but I'm like, yo, God is not a respecter of persons. He want to bless everybody. Yeah. But do you believe, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like your blessing is in your belief system, favor, uh, fortunes, the faithful. And so you got to really make sure that you really believe what's possible for you. Yeah. So when I be traveling and speaking, I feel like half the work I do is mindset, motivation, yeah. inspiration, but I'm trying to help them wrap their minds around. It's possible for you. Like you can, there's kingdom living. Like there is more that you're supposed to have. Yeah. There's a certain way that you're supposed to move and operate and it's possible for you too. So when they see me, I ain't came across nobody that's like, you don't get it. Now they like, man, if it's possible for you, yeah. Jeremy, it's possible for me. I mean, there has to be a level of accountability, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of force people to remove the excuses. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Um, I think once I, once, once I hear somebody says, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I'm like, okay, well, I went through this too. And I went through that. So what? They like, but you don't understand. I'm like, no, nah, I do understand. So sometimes you got to just put it in front of them. Yeah. And 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 they and, and sometimes people aren't ready to receive it. Yeah. So and so you got to give people grace because I've talked to some cats before on some marriage stuff and they like, yeah, you don't get it. I'm like, nah, bro, I do get it. But she said this to me. Okay, but what did you say? Yeah. I literally talked to one of my closest friends yesterday, two days ago, and he was just like. Bro, my wife's still tripping. She's tripping, bro. <laughs> Pray for me. I'm going through it. I said, what happened? He was like, I said this, and she got upset, and I, I apologized, but she's still tripping. I'm like, bro, you can't be mad. You make it seem like she just out of nowhere start tripping. <laughs> it's what you did. Right. You you cut deep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now she done brought a gun to a knife fight, but you picked the knife <laughs> fight, and then now she mad you brought a gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, So I be telling folks all the time, like, you know, pace yourself. I give folks grace, and yeah. it's just like you work on you. Don't point the finger, but you be the best you can be. But people are quick to say, well, that's not possible. I'm not sure if I can do it or can you do it? And I'm just like, look, I know what's possible. Yeah. But are you willing to pay the cost? Ooh. Are you willing to, you know what I'm saying, to pay the, the price? That That's the thing, pay the price. Yeah. And you really talk a lot about paying the price in your marriage. Yeah. And even your wife, you know, um, a few years back, suffered a lot of health challenges. Yeah. Fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. a lot of different yep. things. Endometriosis, yeah. uh, and adenomyosis. Wow. Yeah, we lost two, uh, we lost two babies back to back. Wow. Yeah. And um and there was a time where sometimes sex would even be painful for her. Yeah. And not only was her body failing her, um, but her mind was failing her. She had lost pain I mean the grandparents. Within like a year and a half. So many of her family members yeah, have like passed. Aunt that lived across the street from her. So you know that's like a second yeah, mama. Yeah. Um grandmother, mom and dad. Yeah. All it's within like a year. Every four months. It's like somebody wow. knew. It was just it was hard. Wow. And so it's like all of this was happening at once. It's like it was a blanket of depression that was over our home. Mm. Now, me, like most men, your love language is physical touch. Yeah. So I'm like, touch me. Please <laughs> me. You know what I'm saying? And we were really struggling in the yeah. areas of intimacy. And I just, you know, God just really showed me like, man, your wife is not trying to punish you. She just don't have it. She don't have what it is that you're asking her for. And it was really crushing me because she wasn't meeting my needs and life was crushing her. Yeah. And so God was just like, one of y'all gonna get some relief. And so he said, release your wife. I didn't know how long it was gonna be for. Yeah. But he was just like, do you really love your wife? I said, yeah. He reminded me of the vows we made till death do us part for better or for worse, for richer or for poor in sickness and in health. Yeah. He's just like, so this is the sickness. This is the poor. You know what I'm saying? This is for worse. Yeah. And so he said, release her of those expectations because it's, it's killing her as a woman. That's like, you know, I'm not able to take care of my husband. So he was like, just release her. 
Yeah. Of the expectations. Like, so just release her. She don't have to worry about making love, having just release her. Yeah. And God was just like, I want you to make love to her mind. Yeah. Make love to her heart. Yeah. Make love to her soul. Still take her on dates, still flirt with her, still do the dishes, still run the vacuum. You know what I'm saying? Like hit that fabuloso. You know what I'm saying? Like that <laughs> thing's a ministry. Still be a helpmate. Yeah, yeah. Like still, you yeah. still do all of that. Still yeah. rub her feet. You know what I'm saying? But just the sex part, her body's failing her right now. You know what I'm saying? And so that was probably the hardest season of my life. Nine months. Nine months. Nine months. Yeah. And I didn't plan on it to be nine months. Right. I really just planned on it to be, I didn't know if it was going to be a couple of weeks or a month or so, but it's just like week <laughs> after week, month <laughs> after month, God was like, I'll tell you when I'm going to release you. And man, Brandy, I ain't going to lie. That was the hardest season of my life. I mean, you said you started journaling during this time yeah. and you hadn't been journaling yeah. before. I started waking up around four o'clock then early at three o'clock in the morning for one reason i had some people say oh because you know uh et yeah, yeah hip-hop yeah, preacher yeah, dr yeah, eric thomas yeah. you know he wakes up at three o'clock in the yeah, morning so yeah, people yeah. was like are you trying to be like e I said nah bro i'm trying to be like me hmm. like i'm trying to make sure i win you know what i'm saying because i got that monster inside me and i don't want to be walking around here with an attitude walking around here angry rocking around here snapping you know, I don't want to slip into porn. Like, my biggest flex for those nine months, there was no masturbation, no pornography. There was no side piece. Like, I kept my mind, my body, my temple pure yeah. for nine whole months. Yeah. But it started with me going to sleep early, waking up early. It was certain movies I couldn't watch. If it's a love-making scene, somebody kissing, <laughs> I don't want to see nothing. I'm fast forward, and my wife is like, it ain't that deep. I'm like, <laughs> yes. you don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, I got to keep my mind pure. Wow. And I wake up early and I just have hours with God. And every morning. So you were just morning, waking I, up early to commune with God. Yeah, to, because cause I'm trying to fight that resentment. Yeah, oof. That ooh. way, you know what I'm saying? Because, man, again, ooh. like, I, I don't want to be the guy the up resentment. in the house angry, yeah. mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, just, you, I, you know what I'm saying? Or I mess around and start sliding in somebody DMs or actually entertaining the people sliding in mine. Because it's real, right? Yeah, it's real. real. And Did people you... got to be serious about that. All right, I'm going I'm to go and call myself out. I used the D word one time. What's that? What's the D word? Deserve. I remember I went to God angry. And I was like, man, God, she don't deserve me. Ooh. I said, she don't deserve me. I said, I'm a different type of cat, man. I, I wash dishes. I do laundry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be I be doing extra stuff around the house. She don't pump no gas. I keep her car detailed. She a queen. What she look like pumping gas? Like, I've been about that life, God. Yeah. The average, and I'm the breadwinner. The average cat ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? And so, I was like, man, she don't deserve me. Your ego. Set. Oh, man. And God was like, oh, we talking about what we deserve. Oof. God was like, you don't deserve to get to travel the country and the globe, South Africa, India, Australia, you're getting paid top dollar. He's like, you don't, you don't deserve to have the health you have. Remember when 2004, some Merc put a Uzi to your head on Sparkman Drive outside the gas station? It was going to blow your brains away. He never pulled the trigger. Remember all the times you woke up drunk off the side of the road and you couldn't remember the last 16 hours of the night? You don't want to talk about what you deserve. You should be under the prison, son. Woo! I was just like, I just playing. <laughs> I was just like, I just playing. Man, Listen. God was like, bro, what we not going to talk about Honey. is what we deserve and what we don't deserve. Because you've been riding on grace. Man. And God is like, how you deal with my daughter is how I'm going to deal with you. Wow. And so I just, so I'm like, I'm just going to keep waking. I don't want no smoke with God. I got a healthy <laughs> fear of God. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to keep wake, keep on waking up early. Keep sticking the face of God. Keep my heart. Keep my mind pure. Keep loving on my wife. Keep encouraging her. You know what I'm saying? And eventually we got to the other side of it. You said nine months. It was nine months. You walked in the house. She told you to come upstairs. She said, come upstairs <laughs> right now. It was a different type of energy. I was like, praise God. You know what I'm saying? That was like, praise God. And that was, and I feel like, the, I didn't realize it was nine months hmm. until I was journaling. Like I told you, like you yeah. referenced, like I looked back at my journal and I realized when I started, I said, whoa, this been like, just over nine months and i felt like that was symbolic yeah of us giving birth to something how that most women are you know pregnant for nine yeah. months and then they give birth to their child so it was like us giving birth to a new part of our marriage but it was also something different that was birthed inside me mm. it was what almost was like I don't, I don't i'm still trying to figure it out it was almost like you know when the navy seals 
or the SEAL Team 6, they go through special training. Yeah. They got to wake up early. Yeah. They go days without food. They out in the cold. They in the swamps. They still got to clean the gun. Yeah. Like, it's all preparation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To prepare them. They have to go through a very painful ordeal to prepare them for the mission. Yeah. And I feel like God was trying to end my core knowing I'm going to make you global. You will be super wealthy. You're going to train and disciple other speakers across the globe. Like what I have for you is so big, but I don't need you to be weak. Sacrifice. I don't need you to be soft. I need you to be strong. I need you to be tough. I need you to be spiritually Teflon. So I'm about to take you through it. And the one thing that you feel like you need the most, Ooh. I'm going to take that from you and see if you'll still serve me. See, Brandon, it's easy to worship God when everything is sweet, Honey. when everything is perfect. You know what I'm saying? But when Job lost everything, he was still worshiping God. Yeah. And then when he lost his children and he lost his health, he was just like, curse the day I was born. Yeah. But his wife was like, why don't you just curse God and die? He was like, get out of here, woman. Yeah. Like, it's easy to praise God when everything is sweet. But when he takes everything away, yeah. you got to ask yourself, am I worshiping the, the gift or the giver? Am mm -hmm. I worshiping his presence or his presence? And so for me, God stripped me of all of that. And was just like, now what you going to do about it? Hmm. And I was just like, whatever my lot, you have called me to say it is well with my soul. Ooh. And as, as painful as it was to sing it. Because God told me like, bro, people be singing songs. I want them to live songs. I give myself away. Yeah, yeah. Folks be singing that. Yeah. But it's like, but do you really live it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so God was like, I will not allow for you to be a hypocrite. Yeah. I love you too much. So I'm about to break that thing inside you. That's the mature mindset of marriage. And you talk about that. Yeah. There's a mature mindset of yeah. marriage. You know, when you think about that mindset, you know, you're teaching people about mindset in their speaking life. Mm -hmm. And then you're confronted with that mindset, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in your marriage mm -hmm. and in your personal life. Right. So what is the thing that you say that you speak to men of godly counsel and men that are married. Is that the thing that kind of keeps you in the game? Yeah, absolutely. Because if I if I if I follow my own thoughts, <laughs> I'm gonna get myself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Right. The word says that there is safety in a multitude of counsel. So I'm always looking for that wise counsel. So I got four or five tested, tried, proven cats I can go to. They're all married. They're all married. Okay. They're all men of God. You know what I'm saying? And all of them, except for one that's older than me, and I can go to them. And they tell me, bro, you tripping. Or they tell me, like, nah, you right. I, I do understand how that hurts you yeah. and how you could feel this way. But this is the way you should respond. And I'm like, but I really want to be petty. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I really want to be petty. Yeah. And they just like, you can either be a, you know what I'm saying, petty or you can be a priest. And so I have to make a decision where it's like, okay, I... You know, let me not be petty. So yeah. I have people I, around me. And I tell cats all the time, like, yo, who's your circle of influence? Because yeah. a lot of people are not as successful as they could be in their marriage because of who they're getting information from. So yeah. I always tell people to consider the source. Yeah. So I don't go to somebody that's single to ask for advice or somebody that's unhappy or somebody yeah. that's unfaithful yeah. or somebody that's not rooted in Christ. Like, yeah. I'm not going to come to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For advice, I'm yeah. going to go to someone that's been winning in that space. Yeah. And I can really trust the counsel that they're giving me. Yeah. I, I and that takes a humility too. That's it. And most cats don't, most cats, you know what I'm saying? Most people don't want folks in their business. But yeah. my vulnerability is my superpower. Your vulnerability is your superpower. Yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. open. I'm honest. I'm vulnerable. Yeah. I don't mind sharing how I'm feeling. A lot of cats, you know, since they'll kick it at the sports bar, they'll go to the game, the gym, the barbershop, they'll kick it and kind of talk there. But it's it's rare where you see cats actually share the matters of the heart. Yeah. And so when my circle, like I'm really sharing, this is what I got going on. It's a no judge free zone, and then they can pour into me from there. And um, and that's been my saving grace through the years. Yeah. Yeah. That's fear of influence. Absolutely. How do people get that though? Because I think with in this day and age of like social media mm -hmm. and you kind of build your business in mm -hmm. this social media age, mm -hmm. right? You do a lot of content, you mm -hmm. show a lot of things, but the one thing is you always show your family, right? Right. And so is that the key of kind of keeping that in the forefront as being the ultimate husband and father? Is that the key of your success? It's just making sure you keep that as like the the kind of carrot in front of you at all times. Yeah, and and that's also like what's most important mm. to me. So it's like the carrot, but it's also what drives me, and it's also what keeps me focused. 
right? And for the most part, it keeps those distractions away. Mm. There are some women that see a happily married man as attractive. Oh, and yeah. And they want you even more. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I thought yeah. me posting my wife would be a deterrent. No. <laughs> they was like, they was hit me that much more. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And mm. so, yeah, my family is everything. One thing one of my mentors, Dr. Myron Edmonds, told me when I first started speaking, he said, never make your wife feel like she's in competition with the ministry. Mm. So he was just like, you want to move in a way yeah. where she doesn't feel second. Yeah. So I told people all the time, like, yo, my family don't come second to nobody. Like, my family, my wife, my children, they are my first ministry. What I look like trying to reach the world if I'm not first reaching my household. Oh, yeah. yeah. that I mean, and that's so apparent because you said uh, when people see you, they have to see your wife, Tracy. Absolutely. She is birth children and businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what's interesting? I had somebody one time, they saw me. Uh, online or maybe at a conference and I was talking about my wife and I was talking about all the sacrifices I made for her yeah. and my man went in and made a comment online and um and he was like bro you sound like a simp Ooh, <laughs> they so free with that word I, these I'm days like, let me, I said let me tell you something bro cats be so tough on the ground <laughs> you know what I'm saying but if my man saw me in the elevator he'd be drawn like can I take a picture with you but now you you a tough guy now right so I ain't gonna say it. anyway so so he was like, what does your wife do for you if you do so much for her? Mm. And I was like, bro, what my wife did for me? Wow. Okay, you focusing on the nine months. What about the nine businesses, bro? What about the nine million dollars? Like, you focusing on that, the sacrifice I made. Like, she gave me children. Brandy, I seen when they put the epidural on her back. Yeah. I seen the pain and agony on her face. Yeah. I've seen her fight through everything. Yeah. I don't know how to even put together an a EIN number to, to start up a business. <laughs> I ain't never did our taxes. Like, she literally handles everything. She yeah. runs the she runs the vision, our nonprofit here, the one in South Africa with all the kids we sponsored in college and feeding every week. Like, she runs all of that. So there would be no me if it wasn't for her. So when cats be like, well, what's your wife do for you? I'm like, bro, everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a mouthpiece, right? But she is that side piece, meaning she's by my side. Yeah. Let me clean that up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's by my side, <laughs> yeah. like, guiding me, yeah. not behind me. Yeah. You know, she's by my side. Like, yeah. she's really my help me, like that rib that helped me build yeah. everything that we have. I think, I mean, and, and you said something very powerful, and I hope people caught it. You said she guides me. Absolutely. You know? I don't make any decisions without, if she's not in one accord. Mm. And... It was hard for me to get to that place, though, because mm. I don't want to cast the thing. I'm just, just yeah. awesome, perfect dude. Like, yeah. it was hard because I'm like, yo, I know what I should do. I know what moves the needle. And so God was just like, she's your covering, though. And so if y'all are not in one accord, don't make no moves. So God was like, watch how I favor you if you honor your wife in that space. Ooh. So there are times I would go to my wife like, babe, should we do this? And she'd be like, you know what? I don't think so. And I used to feel like, man, you just hating her. You ain't got faith. I'm, and I would try to convince her. Yeah. And God said, don't do that. Don't use your gift of persuasion that you do on stage. You know, your influence, don't do that. That's almost like manipulation with your wife. You present your case to her. If she's not feeling it, for whatever reason, she could be off. That's fine. Respect her voice. Because we didn't have marriage counseling sessions where she's like, I feel like you don't respect my voice. So God was like, shut your mouth. Don't try to override her. Be still and know that I am God. Watch what happens. Sometimes she'll come to me and be like, you know what? I gave her more thought. Let's do it. Or I might come to her like, babe, psh, we dodged a bullet. Yeah. But my secret space, my sweet spot is we don't make no decisions. We don't make no moves if we're not on the same page. And God was like, don't be trying to convince her. State your case. If she's not feeling it, there's a reason there because there's a special level of discernment that I've given yeah. your wife. Yeah. And so he's like, just just watch. And that's been my sweet spot. And so now I don't make no moves. If she's not feeling it, I'd be, I'd be hurt sometimes. Because yeah. I'm like, I just knew yeah. that was a great idea. Yeah. And so I, I don't make no moves if she's not feeling it. You 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 said at one point though, when you guys have hit some some rough patches and the ebbs and the flows. Yeah, <laughs> you said like at one point you thought you should hire her. You should have just hired her yeah. and not married her. Yeah, I think in that season when we were really struggling with passion, desire, intimacy, like I wanted to be wanted. What my man say back in the day, I want you. Yeah. But I want you to Should've want me, me too. too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so that's the energy yeah. that I had. And when mm. we were struggling in that space, I was just like, man, you're checking off all the boxes. You're like an amazing roommate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're an amazing business partner. Like we do so great with everything else. 
I wonder if it would have been better for me to, I actually talked to a pastor friend of mine that said he had thought the same thing. Like, I wonder if I should have hired my wife as opposed to marrying her. And that actually, you know, crossed my mind at one point. Oh, and wow. so, cause you know, you kind of wonder like, man, we're hitting on every other thing, yeah. but in this area here, we're really struggling and yeah. it shouldn't be that hard. And God helped me through the years understand, bro, this thing is deeper than you even realize. I mean, and I think that that speaks to that maturity mindset in marriage, right? Mm. Because I think for some people who are listening, who may be on the fence about marriage or who have not decided if that's the path for them, I think sometimes, you know, we have to really start hearing the beauty of marriage, right? Mm. And when I say the beauty of marriage, I mean that it's not always picture perfect, right? right. You kind of, it's not a one size fits all. Right. You have to kind of make you all's marriage, you all's marriage, For sure. you know? And a part of that mindset though, is like, we not hanging off to some chandeliers every day. Right. Right, right. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a part of you know standing right. the test of time with somebody that Absolutely. every day is not we hanging from the chandeliers right. or about to rip each other's clothes off. Right, right, yeah. And and you got to be able to, you gotta you gotta be able to appreciate the rain, and the sunshine. Yeah. Because if we lived in a world where there was no rain and the sun was always out, we live in the desert. Yeah. We need that rain. Yeah. We need those clouds. Yeah. Right. In order for us to really be able to thrive, we need that balance. Yeah. And so I believe that in marriage, the, I think the most amazing thing I did was marry my wife. But if, if I look at what caused me the most pain, it was marrying my wife. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just like growth is painful. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's like I got to die to myself. Yeah. I have to focus on what this person needs, what this person wants more than myself. But the reward on the other end is when we come together under the unction of God and he's yeah. blessed his union. It's like, yeah. well, now you unstoppable. Yeah. Right. And so I, I tell people all the time, folks be like, yo, brother, where you talk about marriage, I'm like, I'm just sharing with both parts. It's amazing. We've we experienced the last 15 years together. Like it's been beautiful, but it's also been very painful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like going to the gym. You can go to the gym and have the best little outfit on. You know what I'm saying? They have your little AirPods with the music on, but you're gonna have to go through some pain if you really want to grow. Yeah, if you want the results. And, right. And yeah. so my wife has grown. She is now a mighty woman of God because of what we've experienced and what we've endured. I've grown and matured because of what we've experienced and what we've endured. And I think our saving grace, which has helped us navigate this space and last this long has been counseling, mm. has been marriage coaches and marriage mm. therapists to help us get to this place. Was that from the very beginning when you guys were dating or did that come into play after? We had, you we were had a couple and I, I should actually, I should have them come to your show. Shannon and Shirley Austin, they're here in Atlanta. Okay. They actually did our marriage counseling session before we got married. Okay. And they've taken this journey with us and oh, they've wow. been through hell and back. I like to meet with people who've been tried and tested. Yeah, when yeah. I tell you, they are the real deal holy field. Wow. And they have still taken this journey with us. They're at every one of our conferences sitting next to us, and we would not be married if it wasn't for this power couple. Wow. And so I, I believed in that from the very beginning. And because I need Shirley, she a real one. You're going to love Shirley. She <laughs> will tell you, bro, baby, bro, you tripping. And Shannon would be like, nah, sis, Tracy, you need to, that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Like we have those conversations. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about that is when we're more vulnerable, and I need to talk about that if the spirit moves, but we get to a point in our conversations where she begins to really feel free to say how she feels. I feel free to say how I feel. And then I realized through counseling how much I felt my wife. Mm. We have all these businesses. We've been able to build wealth and just give support kids in different countries and all this stuff, all the amazing things. But I realized I would go to my wife and say, hey, babe, is this a good idea? Is this a good business venture? Is this a good um, investment? And she would say, yes, it makes sense. I would say, bet, let's do it. But never once did I have enough love and respect for her to say, but is this a good time? Yeah. Do you have the bandwidth right now? Yeah. Is this something for the second or third quarter or should we pull the trigger now? And because she was so sensitive to my needs, she didn't want to hold me back. So she was just like, yeah, that does make sense. That could generate the revenue. Okay, let's do it if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And I never had the, I say the love and respect I did. Of course, I loved and respect my wife. I wasn't mature enough to say, hey, honey, 
is this the right time? Yeah, consider or, or she, her feelings. Consider her feelings and yeah. her emotional bandwidth. Because I'm the visionary lead. I'm the face of it. Yeah. But behind the scenes, it's her that's filling out the paperwork and the registration and everything else. And so, but through counseling, I realized, you know what I'm saying, what we struggled with and where I felt her as a husband. Mm. And so I'm like, man, look at this home we built. Look at the lifestyle we have. And But I realized, like, yeah, but now she's a shell of herself. She yeah. told me one time in one of our sessions, I'm 10 years tired. I, I, I heard you say that, that she was 10 years tired. I said, dang, what's that? She's like, I've been tired for 10 years. <laughs> That's that Michelle Obama talk. Remember when Michelle Obama sat down with Oprah? She said for 10 years, she didn't like Barack. Mm, you know? That's that they she went did through. say that. So listen. Wow. Yeah. And so that was a hard... I, I, I dealt with a lot of guilt with that because mm. I feel like I failed my wife. Mm. I was like, here I am feeling like I'm husband of the year, but I didn't realize be, that my vision was so big and I was moving so quick and I wasn't mature enough to say, is this the right time? She was trying to keep up with everything God was was doing when God really was just like, bro, that was the right move, but you didn't. it wasn't the right time. How did that guilt show up for you? Like, how did you express that guilt? Um, I'm not, I just know, I just... Because for me, I pride, like when I tell you, I pride in myself on being a dope husband. Like I was walking around like, girl, you don't know how good you got it, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like I really did have that energy because yeah. I knew I was different. Mm -hmm. And God was just like, bro, okay, you just really being who I called you to be. Right. I didn't call you to be no average husband. Right. You were never average with right. nothing. You did the most. Right. I've been diagnosed with doing the most. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, you did the most when you was in the streets, two dog on nightclubs, yeah. moving work. Like you've always done the most, right? And so... I just think when I realized, like, man, from my actions or my lack of consideration for your band with your time, you know, and how you were feeling, how much that drained and took from you. Yeah. Knowing your personality type, knowing that you're an introvert, knowing that you're very analytical and very calculated and you can't be rushed and you really want to take your time and do things right. Yeah. And I'm going, 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 going. See, I was on the offense. She was on the defense. Mm -hmm. Now we playing the same game. Yeah. We got two different positions. But because she wasn't on the offense, I would feel like, man, you're trying to hold me back or you ain't got faith. Like, mm -hmm. let's just get it done. Like, when the last time we lost, we got this. Yeah. And God was just like, bruh, she on defense. You making the money. She trying to keep the money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She trying to invest it. Like, yeah. you, you trying to move the needle, but she trying to stop the enemy from coming in. And so Ooh. when I realized, yeah. So when Ooh. I realized, you know what I'm Ooh. saying? Ooh, like, you can't skip over that now. You can't, you can't, you can't skip over that, Jeremy. You ain't going to say that and you're trying to squeeze oh, okay. glaze over that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Like, she was trying to keep the enemy from coming in. That's it. That's it. Wow. And so for me, it's like, okay, I'm in, I'm in the castle. We done built this fortress, but it's like she's in protection mode of it. I'm on offense, she's on defense. And so I just had to get to a point where I humble myself and now I make moves with her. And now I'm asking, does this make sense? Is this a good investment? All right, is this the best time or should we wait? And she's like, thank you for asking. Let's put it off to second quarter of next year. I'd be like, dang, I bet. You said something <laughs> that really just jumped out at me. You said she protects. Mm -hmm. Now, we live in this day and age where everybody, you know, women, I want to protect her, I want to provide her, you mm -hmm. know. My daddy wrote a book called Act Like a Lady, Think Like yeah, a Man. Yeah, he yeah, told yeah, our yeah, ladies, yeah. you need a protector, uh -huh, you uh -huh. need a provider. But what you just said, in, a, in mm -hmm. some ways, contradicts mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you just said that your wife mm -hmm. has been at times mm -hmm. a protector Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. How does that show up? Um, I think for me, she would, she, she has a discernment where she can look at a situation and she can know if that's good or not. There have been some engagements that came off my calendar. I'm like, girl, they paid me $35,000. She was like, you need to rest. Mm. Like, no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, but she's like, yeah. So she called my assistant. So now my assistant go to her sometime before she come to me. Wow. And Cause she's always in protection in protection mode. So though I'm like, I protect you. I protect the home. I, we built this life together. She's always thinking about Your the, balance. what what I need in the balance, yeah, the balance and what puts you. me in the best position. And, yeah. and so that's just how she's naturally like a caregiver. She's naturally yeah. wired, you know, like that. And so I just had to learn to embrace it yeah. and not to fight it. But sometimes her protection comes in the form of I want to do something. And she's like, not right now. Or we can't afford it. Or this isn't the best time. And I don't really want to hear that because I'm a go-getter. Yeah. But God is like, bruh, that's your that's your grace. Like, that's your wisdom. Like, sit sit tight. Give it a minute. Yeah. 
there's a reason why she's saying to wait and you'll realize it at some point. I think you just really show how much two is better than one. For sure. Right? For sure. Yeah. And who trying to be out here doing life by themselves? Listen. You know what I'm saying? Listen. And, 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 I would, and one thing my marriage counselors and coaches over the years have told me, and I'm really tired of hearing it, but it makes sense. I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for my wife, hmm. if it wasn't for the challenges we went through. Yeah. So there's a certain sound I have. There's a certain energy I have. There's a certain ethos. There's a certain anointing from the crushing. Like I've been crushed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's been a lot yeah. I've had to endure over the years, but that's what's made me to be the man that I am today. Yeah. If I had a wife that was like, oh, honey, you're so amazing. You're such a hunk. You're so this, you're so that. And just always <laughs> loving on me spiritually, I'd be soft. Yeah. I'd be weak because I ain't never really went through nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? God yeah. was like, oh, okay. So you released the drugs and you released the alcohol and you released, you know what I'm saying? The trapping and everything else. All right. Now I want you to release his job. Quit your full-time job was paying you a good living and go full-time and become a speaker. Like, uh, quit having sex from your wife. Like, you have to release in order to receive. Yeah. And so throughout my life, my life has always been a like a revolving door of, like, God's like, okay, I need to, I need to release this now so that you can receive that. Yeah. And that's been the story of my life. And so initially, early on, I was releasing all the negative stuff. And then I was receiving some great things. And, but then some of those things I received, God was like, now release that. Yeah. And now you're going to receive so much more. So yeah. like when God called me to quit my job, I went to my girl. I was at the school speaking, Brandy, and somebody, a little girl was like, I think she was maybe 14. She was like, Jeremy, I was going to commit suicide. Yeah. But I heard your story and I want to live now. Wow. So I was just like, man, I'm really like doing something in this speaking space. Like I'm saving lives. I told my wife, like, God called me to quit my job. She's like, what he said about me? <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing. I need you to keep working. Because she worked for the government. She was like, nah, bro. She had them good benefits. Yeah, oh, for sure. She was like, if you quit your job, I'm going to quit my job too. We're going to build this thing together. How many people do you think are willing to do that? Very few. And here's the crazy thing. I, I didn't want her to do it. Mm. I was like, nah, you keep working because yeah. your salary alone can cover our car notes and the mortgage yeah. and everything else. We had just built a house, hardwood floors, granite countertops. You couldn't tell us <laughs> nothing. A little 1,800 square feet. We was like, we arrived. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at that time, she was just like, nah, if you quit your job, I'm going to quit my job wow. too. We're going to build this together. And I really was just like, did you pray about that? Like, are you sure? And she was like, yes. And she put in her notice just like that. And we wow. built so when people be like, yo, what your wife do for you? I'm like, bro, everything. Yeah. I would not be here if it wasn't for yeah. her. And so as as challenging as that season was, that birthed something different inside of us even now. We was actually having worship this morning together and going through our devotional. And we identified like, you know, all we've gone through over all the years is, is really what's gotten us here. Yeah. And it's built us to be to this place where yeah. God can trust us with all that we have. And so now we got to just make sure that we don't mess this thing up and we stay yeah. in tune with what he has yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. God is, continues to trust you. Mm -hmm. And your philanthropic work is not just in the States, but around the globe. And so yeah. you have you have children mm -hmm. that you sponsor in South Africa. Right. Um, that yep. you feed and yep. clothe and house. Talk yep. about that. In Cape Town, South Africa, we got our next level living nonprofit organization there, uh, led by Craig and Gavin. Um, and so we have about a thousand young children that we feed every single week there wow. in South Africa. And then we have 40 kids we put in college through our foundation. That's at the College of Cape Town. These are all amazing, bright students who could not afford it. Who yeah. live in the slums. They struggling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But had the grades, but did not have the income. And so we sponsor them and we have 20 of them in college right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the extra resources that God blesses us with, it allows us to be able uh, to do this work. I mean, I think that that's a true testament to your life of you know, the more resources you have, the more good you can do yeah, absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have people that's like, oh, Jeremy, you feed a thousand people a month or a thousand people a week. That's so amazing. I'm like, eh, it's, it's levels to it, though. 
Listen, Brandy. I told you to talk about Tony Robbins. You feel me? Like, you you said it in one of your yeah, in one of your talks. Millions of people. Yeah. So I feed about 50, 52,000 people. <laughs> he feed millions. Like there's levels to it. Yeah. And so I'm just like, okay, what does it take to feed? You know, it's in a hundred thousand people a year. What does it take yeah. to feed a, a thousand, a million people a year? Yeah. What does it take to have two hundred kids yeah. in colleges in different countries? Like, so it's always it's always levels to it. Yeah. Um, but I'm grateful for what we built. But I believe that God will bless you with what he can trust you with. Oh, yeah. And I even had a revelation from God this morning. He was like, cut that out. Cut that out. I got more for you. Don't make me put you on pause. Mm. Don't make me put you on the back. So I'm like, all right, God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I, I really want to be in alignment with him yeah. because I know that monster that's inside me. I got to crucify the flesh thing. Yeah. I want to do things my own way. Yeah. And God is like, I'm going to bless you with all the wealth and all the abundance that I can trust you with. And so I'm just really trying to make sure I stay in that space. Obedient. Obedience. Yeah. And you know what he reminded me of? Um, uh, one of my pr professors in college told me this years ago, partial obedience is complete disobedience. Mm. Partial obedience is complete disobedience. You got to go all or nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. So God is just like, <laughs> bro, don't, don't be partially obedient. Like what made him? What made God take the anointing and the mantle from Saul to eventually give it to David? Was because he told Saul, "This the enemy killed everybody in the camp: the animals, children, women, everybody." Yeah. And he was like, "Well, I'm gonna save this person. I'm gonna save the king, and I'm gonna save the animals." Mm -hmm. No, partial obedience is complete disobedience. Yeah. So I'm in a place now where God is like, "Bro, if you're really trying to win and you want to continue to dominate." Do exactly what I'm telling you to do it, exactly how I tell you to do it, exactly when I yeah. tell you to do it. Oh God. I feel like I'm in that right now. <laughs> right, I feel like right. that is that is my pressing right, right now hmm. in this season. Yeah. I feel like that because, you know, the vision I know that God has given me and shown me, God, I mean, I literally had this. I was in Jamaica speaking at a retreat and mm. I literally like had an encounter, mm. right? And when I came back, God was like, I need you to be obedient. Hmm. I'm going to give you everything, but I need you to be obedient. Hmm. And wow. that's when, that's when it get tricky. You know, right, <laughs> that's right, when it right, gets right, hard. Right, right, that's right. when it gets hard. Right. That's when it gets hard. And so what is that thing? You know, you talk about devotion, you and your wife are in devotion and praise and worship every morning. What is that thing that helps you center? Is that getting in the word? That's making sure you set your time every single morning. What does that look like for you? Yeah, the demand the demand on me is so high on so many fronts, you know, from my speaking, my traveling, my family, you know, our nonprofit organization here in South Africa, all of our different companies and businesses. You know, I'm really trying to make sure that I stay good. So I stay pure. So for the month of December, um, you know, I'll be in South Africa all of December, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we got a nice villa right there on the coast. Oh yeah. There in Cape town, just completely unplugged. And so that's going to be like a sabbatical. So for me, okay. I just need that time of rest. Cause yeah. I got a community of thousands of people that I'm mentoring and coaching yeah. that, that are now speakers and preachers and like making amazing moves, making six, seven figures a year. Like yeah. I'm on some discipleship stuff. Yeah. Randy. yeah. Like, I yeah. got to a point where I'm like, okay, this yeah. was great, but this is a whole nother level to it. And so for me now, the morning time are, is, is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I might not wake up. I might sleep in until like 5, 5.30. Sometimes I get up as early as 4, just to kind of depending on the night I had before. I go to bed really early. You know what I'm saying? My friends tease me. They be like, hey, bro, you see the Lakers? I didn't. Because they don't <laughs> come on till 10, yeah. and I'm asleep by then. Yeah. Bro, you ain't see LeBron break the record? I'm trying to break my own records. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I, it's like that's the energy I be on. But God was like, bro, you're going to have to be disciplined if you really want to dominate out here in the world and so for me i need my morning time with god i need a few hours before i deal with my wife or anybody else so you're up by yourself yes you're, that's my that's my favorite part of the day you have I'm your own room right now yep mm -hmm. um, um. i got my own chair downstairs in my office right by the uh espresso machine <laughs> and i just kick my feet up and yeah. some mornings i just have time of prayer some mornings i might watch a sermon uh, some mornings I might just go on the word. Some mornings I might be in a devotional or I might re be, re be uh, reading a devotional yeah. book. So I've got different things that I do each morning. Because you, you know, my my wife wouldn't want to go to the same restaurant yeah. and have the same yeah. meal every yeah. single day. 
you want to yeah. switch up date night. And I, and I think that that's the thing that, that you have to simplify for people yeah. because most people think that it's some hard thing huh. that they have to do every yeah. single day. It's finding the thing that works for you. Absolutely. Whether that's putting on a sermon, whether that's reading, you know, your 365 devotional, yeah. whatever that is, right. make it work for you. Absolutely. And then, and then mix it up. Yeah. So some mornings I'm like, you know what? I need a sermon or I see Darius Daniels or I see T.D. Jakes just drop this word yeah. and check this out. Yeah. Or some mornings I'm like, let me get back in this book. Or some mornings I'm like, let me just search the scriptures and just kind of follow the story of Jonah. Like yeah. it just really depends on what I'm feeling that morning. But it's key to have that time with God. And then I go through three prayers. I pray a prayer of Thanksgiving. Mm. Right. We're in a, a prayer of forgiveness. Then I go and I start interceding for my wife, my children, family, friends, somebody that pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'll start interceding and then I make my personal request known to God. Okay. And by the time I'm done with that, I text my wife, like, you ready? She's like, Yep. And then we have our time with God together. So you spend your time alone and then you and your wife also commune sure. together. For sure. And that has been, has that been since the beginning or was that a thing That's that was a game changer? That's something we actually started a few months ago. Okay. So she would have her time with God. I would have my time yeah. with God. And then I see you, mwah, good morning. And we just kind of go and then we pray together as a family before the kids go off. Okay. But now we're in the season now where we're like, we need to make sure we like a fortress. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we need to make sure like yeah. we didn't overcame a lot, but let's not get comfortable. Yeah. So our marriage council was like, y'all need to be having y'all's morning worship and devotion together on the regular. Oh, wow. And so we was like, okay, let's go. Oh, wow. Yep. You said recently that um, ratchetness, you said, yeah. I don't want to mess this up. Righteousness is not popular. Right. Ratchetness is. Yeah, for sure ratchetness is yeah popular. it's weird it's like I, you go online and the things that go viral is somebody fighting or some, yeah. somebody saying something toxic or, yeah you know saying sex sells yeah sex and drama sells right and so i just realized like that's just the world that we live in yeah and so for me i won't compromise i'm still gonna be who god called me to be and i don't i ain't even tripping on the youtube instagram you know what I'm saying algorithm like god gonna send this content god mm. gonna send this to whoever needs to hear it whoever yeah. gonna need to watch this episode yeah. they gonna download it they yeah. gonna subscribe yeah. y'all better subscribe you know yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. people gonna get that like yeah. so i'm like i ain't even tripping on that i'm just gonna put this good out here but it is interesting that the most toxic things in the world are those things that tends to blow up. Yeah. And, but that keeps me rooted. That keeps me grounded. Yeah. Brandy, people be like, Jay, man, you go so hard, bro. Like, put that thing in cruise control. I'm like, the um, the sex trafficking industry not in cruise control. Yeah. The porn industry not in cruise control. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the pain, all the, the drug trafficking, like, yeah. all the evil in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, they not in, you know what I'm saying, the private prisons where people are profiting, you know what I'm saying, off the demise of our young black and brown yeah. kids. Like, they not in cruise control. So I'm like, I got to put as much positivity out here in the world. And God was like, I want you to step back from speaking so much. Be very select with your engagements. But I want you to train and raise up the next generation of speakers so we can have an even bigger impact. Jesus had his 12. Then he had the three he kept really close to him. Right. And then he had the 12 overall. Then they had the 3000. Yeah. So that's what I'm on right now. I feel like I got my 12 and we got our 3000. Yeah. And so now we're raising up the next generation of speakers and yeah. we're about to change the world. Kingdom building. That's it. Just like that. Yeah. Kingdom talk building. that talk. That's it. Kingdom building. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly where we are. And because at our conferences, and I can't wait to have you as a special guest at our next conference <laughs> is going to be in June. I'll give you the dates. Accidentally, we baptized 115 people. I think I saw that on one of the, one of the videos. You, That's crazy, you, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say accident yeah. because I was just on stage and everybody's yeah. looking at me like, yo, man, Jeremy, multi-millionaire, he makes seven figures a year speaking, like, but he seemed like he always home with his family. Like, I want to charge $50,000 to speak. I'm like, bro, you looking at that, but you ain't see the nine months I fasted from my wife. You ain't see the sacrifices I made. You didn't see the mornings I was up wrestling and crying with God. You didn't see the marriage counseling. You didn't see me stop cigarettes and weed and alcohol, cold turkey. Like, you ain't see that. You ain't see when I got baptized. Yeah. And I was I shouted out one of our community members. I was like, yo, shout out to my man. He want to get baptized. I brought him up on stage, and I started seeing people cry. And God was like, because last year we baptized 40 people. Oh, wow. And so God was just like, just ask them. I was like, I know this ain't a church event, but God is with us. 
people be like, how are you able to do that at your conference? Nigga, it's my conference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can do what I want to do at my conference. Yeah, yeah. It's my, this is the home yeah, I built. Yeah. They know I'm a man of God. Yeah. Everybody that joins my community, yeah. been on calls, they've been on virtual events. They know I'm praying. They know I'm a man of God. Yeah. If you if you don't rock with that, then stay away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, yo, does anybody want to give your life to God? Anybody want to be baptized? Go down to that watery grave. Do you really want to be where I am? You mm. really want to go to that next level? Renew. I'm going to give, yeah, renew. I'm going to give you the strategy. I'm going to give you the marketing. We're going to talk about branding and how to put together your message and how to get speaking engagements. But what if your heart ain't right? What if your soul ain't right? We baptized 115 people at the, at the, at the, on the rooftop of Listen. the Marriott Marquis and then the Hyatt. In the, the pool. Downtown Atlanta. Come on pool. now. Listen. Yes. I mean, I think that that right there is what we need more of, hmm. right? We need more of people who are willing to take a step away from the profitability, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. of what this moment can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do what God has called us and be who God has That's called it. us to be in that moment. That's it. And not many people will be brave enough, bold enough, mm -hmm. courageous enough, right, mm -hmm to step into that hmm. because most people would be like, Oh, I don't want people to think I'm, I'm that guy, <laughs> you know? And then my thoughts was like, is it going to be mixed signals? And I was like, you know what? It might be. So we're going to clear it up. I'm a man <laughs> of God first. Yeah. Like don't get it twisted. Yeah. I'm not just a speaker. I'm not just a coach. Like we different Brandy. Like at our conferences, spouses come free. Every, any of our events, I want your spouse to sit next to you for free. Yeah. It ain't like an extra $200. It's like if you get this ticket, wow. your spouse can come for free. Yeah. We know the importance of that family element, of that husband and wife element. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we support that. These are just some of the core pillars yeah. of our company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We have 14 on core values. The number one is family first. Yeah. And so we support that element in everything we do. And then prayer is the second one. So at our conferences... A third of the people that's there are spouses. Yeah. Because when they leave our experience, they going back home trying to tell their wife, like, Brandy, yeah. wow, it was amazing. But she, you got to be there. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, nah, God said, create this space. So over a few years ago, we changed everything. We said from here on out, we want spouses with them. And so we just being who God called us to be. And I'm being who God has called me to be. And God has blessed me with a phenomenal team. Yeah. An amazing team. And God is just like, you just spend this time taking care of those who take care of you. Mm. And when I look at my team, I look at Nick and, and Crump and Deani and my wife and our team as a whole. I'm like, man, God, you have truly favored me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To have such an amazing and anointed spirit filled team that go above and beyond. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a blessing. So I could talk about them all day. I, I mean, I love that. I, I love that because I think it shows your gratitude. Mm -hmm. It shows your servant's heart. Mm -hmm. It shows that you are rooted in your purpose yeah. of where God is taking your life. Yeah. And so as we close out this interview, because this has just been amazing, Thank Jeremy, you. as we close out this interview, I want you to really talk about the favor that God has on your life, but explain to other people and appeal to other people about the favor that God can have on their life. Yeah. So, you know, earlier I mentioned, you know, that God is not a respecter of persons. Like he want to bless everybody. Some of y'all looking at Brandon like, oh, if I just had this, if I just had that. No, all you need is God. Right, people look at me like, man, if I just had this, if, no, all you need is God. Like, he's my source. He's my plug. I know he's your yeah, plug. Yeah, I know what yeah, atmosphere. I walked yeah, in here on yeah, an hour or so yeah. ago, right? And so just know that God wants that for you. But just like my daughter, my daughter already, she's like, Daddy, I want a purple metallic Lambo when I turn 16. <laughs> <laughs> she only 11. And she already talking about, I want a metallic yeah, yeah. purple Lambo. Specific. I'm like, how about we get a purple Tesla, maybe, <laughs> right? But she only 11. Yeah. It's, I'm not going to not get her the Lambo because I can't afford it. She's not ready for a Lambo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She might be ready for a Saab or a Kia <laughs> or a Tesla, something really safe. Yeah. Right? Now, when she finished law school or whatever, maybe now I bless her with a Lambo. Yeah. It's not that I don't love my daughter. Yeah. It's just that she's not ready for it yet. So for those of y'all that's like, man, I want to experience the favor of God, like just being in alignment with him. 
Just talk to him like, God, I know you have great things for me. Like his word actually says on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. On earth as it is in yeah. heaven. I live that. Yeah. I'm like, I ain't got to wait till I get to heaven to yeah. live in abundance. Yes. He wants me to have that. We yes. are royal people, a chosen priesthood. Yes. Like I really believe that like we the head and not the tail. Yeah. We are above and not beneath. We're supposed yeah. to pass wealth down to our children's children's children. That is the life that you're supposed to live. But you got to believe. And you got to be willing to make whatever necessary sacrifices to get that. So when people see the life I'm living and what I'm able to experience, yeah. they don't know the sacrifice. They don't know the discipline. They don't know the pain that I had to go through and the yeah. constant pursuit to be in alignment with God. So when people yeah. see me winning, I'm like, I'm winning because I'm in alignment with what God has for me. And what he has for me is for me. And what he has for you is for you. But you got to go out here and go get it. Oh, Jeremy, it has been a pleasure. Man, thank you for thank having me. Thank you so much. You guys, this has been another enlightening conversation here at Vault Empowers. We want you to not just like. We don't want you to just comment. We want you to subscribe so you do not miss a daily dose of motivation, inspiration, be in a constant and daily pursuit of God. He has favor that he is just desperate to give to you. Until next time, you guys, eat well, give a damn, move your body every single day. I'm your girl, Brandi Harvey. Until next time, peace.